Nice suit. John Phillips, London. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 acting debuts in movies. She ain't better than anybody. She ain't nothing but common. Now who you calling common? I have a bit sense. What do you mean? It's like I have ESPN or something. For this list, we'll be looking at the best debut performances in movie history. This must be the actor's first appearance in a film, even if they had previously acted on stage or television. What do you think is the best debut performance of all time? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Alan Rickman, Die Hard Hans Gruber is one of the greatest antagonists in movie history, and he was played by first-time film presence Alan Rickman. Wow. I don't know it, I'm telling you. Get on the jet to Tokyo and ask the chairman, I'm telling you, you're just gonna have to kill me. Okay. Rickman was an accomplished stage actor at the time, a member of the Royal Shakespeare Company, having trained at London's Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. I can't take the time now to mention all the Shakespearean roles you've done. In 1985, Rickman starred in productions of As You Like It and Troilus and Cressida, and he was nominated for a Tony Award for his performance in Les Liaisons Dangereuses, one year prior to Die Hard. But it was Hans Gruber that made Rickman a star, his suave performance impressing critics and general moviegoers alike. Gruber was different from many 80s action villains, stylish, calm, and wickedly intelligent. When Alexander saw the breadth of his domain, he wept, for there were no more worlds to conquer. Benefits of a classical education. And Rickman played it all perfectly. Enough jokes. You made a pretty good cowboy yourself, Hans. Oh, yes. What was it you said to me before? yippee ki Number 19, Jason Schwartzman, Rushmore. Directed by Wes Anderson and co-written with Owen Wilson, Rushmore concerns a love triangle between an elementary school teacher, a rich businessman, and a 15-year-old private school student. Max, mm -hmm. can I ask you something? Sure. Has it ever crossed your mind that you're far too young for me? The latter is portrayed by Jason Schwartzman, a member of the iconic Coppola family. The 17-year-old Schwartzman met the movie's casting director at a party, and he earned the role of Max Fisher over 1,800 other teenagers. The collaboration between Schwartzman and director Wes Anderson proved an enormous success, and Schwartzman received critical acclaim for his debut performance. Sick transit Gloria. Maybe we'll meet again someday, when the fighting stops. He's since become a frequent collaborator of Anderson's, both starring in his movies and co-writing the likes of The Darjeeling Limited and Isle of Dogs. I'm not doing this because you commanded me to. I'm doing it because I feel sorry for you. Number 18, Kate Winslet, Heavenly Creatures. This is Juliet Hume. Kate Winslet is one of the most acclaimed actresses of our time, the recipient of seven Academy Award nominations, and she began her film career playing a murderer. Winslet debuted in Peter Jackson's Heavenly Creatures, which dramatizes the Parker Holm murder case of 1954. One of the criminals was Juliet Holm, a teenage girl who conspired with her best friend Pauline Parker to murder Parker's mother. I know what to do about mother. We don't want to go to too much trouble. Some sort of accident. Holmes served five years for the murder, and 40 years later, she was played by future Hollywood legend Kate Winslet. Winslet was widely acclaimed for her disturbing performance and walked away with various accolades, including an Empire Award and a London Film Critics Circle Award. Your mother is rather a miserable woman, isn't she? Number 17, Barbara Streisand, Funny Girl. Serving as one of the most popular and acclaimed musicals of all time, Funny Girl tells the semi-autobiographical story of Broadway star Fanny Bryce and her relationship with con artist Nikki Arnstein. I'd rather be blue over you than be happy 
with somebody else. I'm crazy about ya. Debuting on Broadway in 1964, Funny Girl was nominated for eight Tony Awards, including Best Performance by a Leading Actress for Barbara Streisand. The performance proved so instantly iconic that Streisand reprised the role of Fanny Bryce for the 1968 film adaptation, making her film debut in the process. And what a debut it was! Streisand put just as much effort in front of the camera as she did on stage, and she won the Academy Award for Best Actress in the process. Don't, quit. Don't, Don't tell me! Don't tell me not to live, just sit and putter. Life's candy and the sun's a ball of butter. Don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. Number 16, Haley Steinfeld, True Grit. Well, lawyer Jacob would not wish me to consider anything under $325. But I will settle for 320 if I am given the 20 in advance. Haley Steinfeld was introduced to acting through her Emmy Award winning cousin, True O'Brien, who has garnered fame playing Paige Larson on the soap opera Days of Our Lives. When Steinfeld was 13 years old, she landed the role of Maddie Ross in the Coen Brothers adaptation of True Grit. It's an incredibly difficult role, with Steinfeld needing to deliver complex, outdated dialogue and starring opposite the legendary Jeff Bridges. It would be a challenge for experienced actors, let alone a 13-year-old girl. But Steinfeld was up for the challenge, and she was consistently praised by critics for her debut performance. For her efforts, Steinfeld received her first and so far only Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress. I don't think you're gonna do it! What do you think now? Oh, one of my short ribs broke. You killed my father when he was trying to help you. Oh. I have one of the gold pieces you stole from him, now give me the other! Number 15, Anya Taylor-Joy. The Witch. When she was just 14 years old, Anya Taylor-Joy dropped out of school to pursue acting. She found modeling work instead, having been discovered outside London's Harrods department store. She subsequently found acting work through her modeling and made her film debut in Robert Eggers' period horror movie The Witch. She plays Thomason, a banished Puritan who is accused of witchcraft by her family. I made no bargain. Thy soul belongeth to Christ. I made no bargain. The devil hath no interest in thee. I am no witch, Father. What did I but see in my house? Will you not hear me? I pretty confess. Why have you turned against me? Taylor Joy is excellent in the role, balancing passivity with outrage, fear, and eventual confidence. The Witch proved one of the most acclaimed horror films of 2015 with the screenplay, direction, atmosphere, and performances earning particular attention. It made Taylor Joy a star, and she subsequently became one of the most popular actresses of the latter 2010s. What's that like to live deliciously? Yes. What's that like to see the world? Number 14, Sidney Poitier, No Way Out. One of the greatest, most influential, and most groundbreaking actors in movie history, Sidney Poitier, was the star of many iconic films dealing with race relations in mid-century America. Oh. Shut up, shut up. You're talking to a doctor. A doctor? Him? Lie back and lie still, you're in my charge. In 2002, Poitier earned an honorary Academy Award for his historic accomplishments in film. Poitier made his debut in the controversial 1950 movie No Way Out, playing Dr. Luther Brooks, an African-American doctor confronted with racism in a hospital prison ward. The film proved Poitier's talents as an actor and signaled his prolific career in films dealing with racial tensions. He's not even human, he's a mad dog. You kill mad dogs, don't you? Don't you think I'd like to? Don't you think I'd like to put the rest of these bullets through his head? Then go ahead. I can't. Why not? Because I've got to live too. Almost 13 years after the release of No Way Out, Poitier became the first black man to win the Best Actor Oscar, which he received for Lilies of the Field. Well, how'd you get there before I came along? We walk every Sunday, now we got you. Now, damn it! <gasps> you ain't got me. Good night, Shmi. Now get that very strange. Schlaf and see And cut that out. Number 13, Quivengene Wallace, Beasts of the Southern Wild. Wallace auditioned for Beasts of the Southern Wild when she was just five years old, having lied about her age to break the minimum age requirement of six. 
The director, Ben Zeitlin, was reportedly impressed by her ability to burp on command, winning her the part of Hush Puppy. The movie sees Hush Puppy and her temperamental father, Wink, living in a secluded Louisiana bayou. Wallace gave an impassioned, complex, and mature performance of someone far beyond her years, and won a slew of accolades throughout the 2013 awards season. No crying here. No crying. She also became the youngest actress ever nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actress, beating Whale Rider's Keisha Castle Hughes by four years. Number 12, Robert Duvall, To Kill a Mockingbird. Dale, I don't want you playing around that house over there. There's a maniac lives there and he's dangerous. See, I was just trying to warn him about Boo, but he wouldn't believe me. Prior to his role in To Kill a Mockingbird, Robert Duvall was an accomplished stage actor working in New York. In 1957, he starred in a play called The Midnight Caller, which was written by Horton Foote. Duvall's performance impressed Foote, and when he adapted Harper Lee's iconic novel for the screen, he recommended Duvall to the movie's producers. Duvall was cast as the famous recluse Boo Radley, and the rest is movie history. Hey, Boo. Miss Jean Louise, Mr. Arthur Radley. I believe he already knows you. Like the novel, To Kill a Mockingbird was a resounding success, earning eight nominations at the 35th Academy Awards. Unfortunately, Duval was not one of them. No matter, he would later earn seven, the first of which came one decade later with The Godfather. Number 11, Oprah Winfrey, The Color Purple. This period drama proved an enormous departure for director Steven Spielberg who, prior to this, had been known for his summer blockbusters. The Color Purple, on the other hand, is a dramatic and introspective look into the African-American experience of the early 20th century. Your children are so clean. Would you like to work for me? Be my maid? Hell no. It's based on a Pulitzer-winning novel and stars Whoopi Goldberg as a rural Georgian named Seely. Oprah Winfrey stars opposite Goldberg as Sophia, a strong-willed woman who refuses to be oppressed. At the time, Winfrey was working as a morning talk show host in Chicago. With the color purple, she proved her incredible capabilities as an actress and earned both a Golden Globe and Academy Award nomination. I never thought I had to fight in my own house. I love Hoppo. God knows I do. But I kill him dead for I let him beat me. Number 10, Edward Norton, Primal Fear. For his film debut, Edward Norton was forced to play two people, kind of. He plays a sociopathic murderer named Roy, who pretends to suffer from dissociative identity disorder in order to get out of a murder charge. The other personality is the innocent, passive, and stuttering altar boy, Aaron Stampler. I'd surely be great, great for anything you could do for me. You're welcome. Now, your full name is one, um, Aaron Luke Stam Stampler. At the time, Norton was a struggling New York actor working in theater. He was then discovered by a casting director named Shirley Rich, who introduced Norton to the executive producers of Primal Fear. He obviously got the job and was often singled out in reviews as the best aspect of the movie. It sounds to me like they're gonna shoot old Aaron so full of poison it's gonna come out his eyes. Where is Aaron? Aaron's crying off in some corner somewhere. You scared him off. You gotta deal with me now, boy. I'll give you a beating on principle. Norton earned an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor, the movie's only Oscar nomination, and Norton's first of three. There never was a Roy. Jesus Christ, Marty, if that's what you think, I am disappointed in you. I don't mind telling you. There never was an Aaron. Number 9. Gabare Sidibe, Precious A Harlem native, Gabare Sidibe was working as a receptionist when she decided to audition in a nationwide casting call for Precious. The movie is based on the novel Push by Sapphire and concerns the illiterate and pregnant Clarice Jones living in poverty in 1980s Harlem. Jones lives in Section 8 housing with her unemployed and mean-spirited mother Mary. She say I eat all the time, but she always making me eat. And she called me a fat mess. She said her apartment little because of me. Only time she ever leaves to play her numbers. Sidibe proved an exceptional and natural actress. 
thrilling critics with her tender debut performance. She was also one of the leading names of the 2010 awards season, receiving Best Actress nominations at the Golden Globes, BAFTAs, Screen Actors Guild Awards, and Academy Awards. No, I never knew what you was until this day. Not even after all them things you did. Maybe I was too stupid. Maybe I just didn't want to. You ain't gonna see me no more. Sidibe rode this success to a prominent career in television, starring in Fox's Empire and numerous seasons of American Horror Story. I didn't know that there even were black witches. As it turns out, I'm an heir to Tituba. She was a house slave in Salem. She was the first to be accused of witchcraft. Number eight, Jennifer Hudson, Dream Girls. Like Funny Girl, Dreamgirls is often hailed as one of the greatest Broadway musicals of all time. Debuting in 1981, Dreamgirls won six Tony Awards during its initial Broadway run, including Best Performance by a Leading Actress for Jennifer Holliday playing Effie White. Twenty-five years later, American Idol contestant Jennifer Hudson took the reins, proving herself both a commendable actress and a tantalizing performer in the process. The movie was praised for its musical numbers and performances, particularly those of Hudson and Eddie Murphy. Both received Academy Award nominations, with Hudson winning for Best Supporting Actress. Effie White is one of the all-time great Broadway characters, and Hudson beautifully inhabited the role in a thrilling movie debut. Number 7. Eddie Murphy, 48 Hours And speaking of Eddie Murphy, he enjoyed a commendable movie debut himself in the buddy cop comedy 48 Hours. I'm on. Let's go get something to eat. I know a place. All right? All right, let's go. All right. With some mandolins, with some violins. Yeah. There's your goddamn dinner. Murphy plays an imprisoned criminal named Reggie Hammond, who reluctantly teams up with a cop to help catch his criminal boss. Murphy had made a name for himself on Saturday Night Live, serving as both a cast member and writer. 48 Hours proved his acting capabilities and the movie received praise for the chemistry and comedic interplay between Murphy and co-star Nick Nolte. Take game, man, and blow his f***ing brains out! <laughs> Bullshit, he ain't gonna try it. Right, cop? Are you crazy, man? I was just bluffing! Murphy received a Golden Globe nomination for New Star of the Year, and it would prove to be his first of six. Number six, Jamie Lee Curtis, Halloween. By October of 1978, Jamie Lee Curtis, the daughter of Hollywood legends Tony Curtis and Janet Lee, was a little-known television actress, having starred in an episode of Columbo and the first season of an ABC sitcom called Operation Petticoat. She was subsequently cast as Laurie Strode in Halloween, with producer and co-writer Deborah Hill admitting that Curtis was mainly cast for the publicity, her mother being such a prominent horror actress. Luckily, Curtis proved an excellent actress in her own right and helped popularize the morally pure final girl trope through her performance. She exuded intelligence and proved a great screamer, becoming the seminal example of the scream queen. She carried this reputation into numerous future slashers, including Prom Night and Terror Train. Number 5. Julie Andrews, Mary Poppins an AFI Life Achievement Award recipient, Julie Andrews is one of the all-time greatest performers, with a career spanning nine decades. The qualifications. Item one, a cheery disposition. I am never cross. Item two, rosy cheeks. Obviously. 
Andrews was a prominent stage actress throughout the 50s and 60s, starring in Broadway productions of My Fair Lady and Camelot. She earned a Tony Award nomination for both. After being passed over by producer Jack L. Warner for his My Fair Lady movie adaptation, Disney approached Andrews about starring in their upcoming movie Mary Poppins. She agreed to star as the title character, and it launched one of the greatest careers in movie history. Andrews won the Academy Award for Best Actress, and Mary Poppins herself quickly became a cinematic icon. It's super califragilistic, expialidocious, even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. Number 4. Natalie Portman, Leon the Professional. Natalie Portman got off to quite a weird and disturbing start. In 1992, she became an understudy in the off Broadway play Ruthless which is about an ambitious young actress who commits multiple murders, including matricide. She then made her film debut in Luc Besson's Leon the Professional, which is about a hitman training a 12-year-old girl to commit murder so she can avenge her dead brother. If you couldn't stand them, why are you crying? Because they killed my brother. What the hell did he do? He's four years old. He never used to cry. He just used to sit next to me and cuddle. The young Portman was continuously praised for her mature performance, with many finding her a great companion to seasoned French actor Jean Reno. It was a movie and a performance beyond Portman's years, and the breakout role helped ensure Portman's reputation as one of Hollywood's greatest child actors. It's barely big enough for me. We said no discussion. No, I'm not letting... Listen I'm not going! Listen I won't go! Me. Number 3. Anna Paquin, The Piano This period drama concerns Ada and Flora McGrath, a mother-daughter duo who travel to New Zealand after Ada is sold into marriage by her father. We can't leave the piano! Well, let's not discuss this any further. I'm very pleased that you arrived safely. Mother wants to know if they could come back directly for it. To cast Flora, the producers hosted an open casting call that resulted in over 5,000 auditions. The role went to a young New Zealand Canadian girl named Anna Paquin. Both Paquin and lead actress Holly Hunter were unanimously praised by movie critics, and they both won Academy Awards for their performances. Hunter for actress, Paquin for supporting actress. Paquin was just 11 years old when she won the coveted Oscar, which makes her the second youngest performer to win a competitive Academy Award. The first being number two, Tatum O'Neill, Paper Moon. Young Tatum O'Neill was born to actors Joanna Moore and the Oscar nominated Ryan O'Neill. In 1973, Tatum and Ryan starred together in the road comedy Paper Moon, which sees a con artist taking a young girl under his wing during the Great Depression. I want my $200. I heard you through the door talking that man. It's my money you got, and I want it. The movie received strong reviews, with most of the praise going to first-time actor Tatum O'Neill. O'Neill won the Most Promising Newcomer Award at that year's Golden Globes, and just a few months later, she took home the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Being just 10 years old, O'Neill became, and remains, the youngest performer to win a competitive Academy Award. I gave her a $20 bill. I know I did. It was a birthday present for my Aunt Helen in Wichita, and she wrote, Happy Birthday, Addie, on the end of it. You just go look and see. That's it right there. That's my $20 bill. I it's a once-in-a-lifetime achievement for a once-in-a-lifetime child performance. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Owen and Luke Wilson, Bottle Rocket. The Wilson brothers make extraordinary debuts in this Wes Anderson crime comedy. Two minutes. Okay. Put on your mask. Put on your mask. They've already seen our faces, did Don't worry about it. Put on your mask. Charlotte Copley, District 9. The South African actor makes his movie debut as a bureaucrat in this sci fi classic. Hello. Okay. Seems like we didn't understand each other there properly, eh? Okay. So you've got a little one there, eh? Do you have a license for that little one? Well, you see this litter out here. This is dangerous conditions for your child. Cameron Diaz, The Mask. This comedy launched the career of Diaz, a model with no prior acting experience. Sort of a Lady Godiva or something. Of course. What do you see, Mr. Ipkiss? No. Suraj Sharma, Life of Pi. Sharma beat out 3,000 people, including his own brother, for the role of Pai Patel. Are you ready? 
ready for the miracle event? Well then, I give to you the astounding Bengal Tiger! Amanda Seyfried, Mean Girls. Seyfried, a model and soap actress, made us all laugh as the idiotic Karen Smith. Karen used her special talents to do the morning weather announcements. Hi, this is Karen Smith. It's 68 degrees and there's a 30% chance that it's already raining. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Orson Welles, Citizen Kane Orson Welles was just five days shy of his 26th birthday when Citizen Kane premiered at New York's Palace Theatre. It's an extraordinary accomplishment considering the young Welles wrote, produced, directed, and starred in the now iconic film. Welles was prominent in radio at the time, and in 1939, he signed a controversial contract with RKO Radio Pictures to create two films. On the other hand, I am the publisher of The Inquirer. As such, it's my duty and I'll let you in on a little secret. It's also my pleasure to see to it that decent, hardworking people in this community aren't robbed blind by a pack of money-mad pirates. The first was Citizen Kane, which is now regarded as the most influential movie ever made. Wells stars as the titular Charles Foster Kane, proving himself just as capable in front of a camera as he was behind a microphone. The decent, ordinary citizens know that I'll do everything in my power to protect the underprivileged, the underpaid. And they underfed. The movie was well received and earned nine nominations at the 14th Academy Awards, including Best Director and Best Actor for Wells. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.